Great tip for our Prime Minister, who sure needs them. Britain's Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, he's signed hundreds more licences to uh, suddenly let uh, oil and gas be extracted from the North Sea, has reversed this global warming extremism, and his popularity, bang, has soared, at least among his uh, members. His Conservative members joining me from London is writer and broadcaster Esther Cracker. Esther, the, what does this tell you, that the public has spoken uh, against this religion of the elites? What's going on? <laughs> you could hear the, sh the screams from, from Just Stop Oil activists all the way from <laughs> Australia. Uh, so <laughs> this, clearly this move is very popular with the Conservative base at the very least. And I suspect um, with the wider public that's really understanding how acute Britain's energy security problem is, uh, especially you know in the midst of this cost of living crisis and high energy bills. Uh, the reality is, at least for businesses in particular, you know they pay 50% more for their energy bills than, for, for instance, in the US and significantly you know more, around 30 to 40%. Um, in, the, um, in, in other, reg um, other countries like in Europe. So the reality is Britain has a very acute energy security problem and energy, you know, build problem as well. Uh, and this is one step closer to actually trying to rectify it. The reality is, you know, this is in conjunction with, you know, expanding um, carbon capture technology as well. So it's not just about, you know, increasing oil and gas exploration and then you know, polluting the atmosphere, which is really what's getting people's uh, backs up. It's also about, you know, expanding the technology that we have to actually capture that carbon as well to reduce our carbon emissions and, 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 and store it in a more uh, environmentally friendly way. So I can understand people's apprehensions of this. But the reality is our energy bills are too much. We don't have energy security. Our, our gas and oil storage is, you know, reserves is basically nil, especially in comparison to the US and other countries in Europe. And we really have to rectify that. Yeah, I don't know. I just um, don't talk me out of it, Esther. I just had this feeling that here's this super rich guy of the elite, very rich, the prime minister, in a little cocoon way above the earth, and suddenly a crack has been lit and a fresh air and is suddenly getting intoxicated. Hey, I can be popular doing, you know, challenging the global warming thing that I've been part of. So anyway, let, I hope that the idea sinks in with our prime minister. Don't say another word, Esther, in case you break my narrative there. Uh, to an astonishing story that is so 2023, Esther. Uh, honestly, the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle has an exhibition of Harry Potter memorabilia, but has airbrushed out its author, J.K. Rowling, airbrushed her out from its Hall of Fame because it says it disagrees with her view that trans women are actually still men. It calls this super hateful and divisive, and so has scrubbed her, airbrushed her out. And that is from a museum, Esther? Yes, it's incredible. Um, I, I, it's important to note that this museum is in Seattle, which is probably one of the most liberal cities on the planet. Um, so it's understandable that the people that work in this establishment would, would hold such views. But it's very clear that the hysteria and the hatred that's, and the vitriol that's been to, um, aimed at uh, you know, J.K. Rowling just shows how irrational you know, the people that oppose her are. This is a woman who herself has been a victim of domestic violence and has spoken up for women on, on numerous occasions. There are clearly inconsistencies with trying to force the public and public policy to, to conform with this idea that you can change your gender just by feeling it, um, which is, is completely ludicrous. And, you know, you have to, you have to admire her bravery because this, this airbrushing of, of this woman, effectively trying to deperson her and to erase her from the history books, even though they have, they have uh, you know, an exhibition dedicated to her work, which is Harry Potter, is ludicrous. And it just shows how <laughs> ideologically inconsistent uh, th these people are. Well, it makes you wonder what the new edition of Harry Potter books come out without an author on the on the cover. I mean, it's just so stupid. Uh, and I guess all these people in this popular hall of fame, you know, popular culture hall of fame, must be saints. <laughs> I wonder who qualifies. Meanwhile, in Britain, Esther, the Great Western Railway uh, has banned a website of a group that holds J.K. Rowling's same opinions, you know, like uh, uh, about transgender issues. Uh, said it was linked to terrorism and hate, so you couldn't look it up if you were uh, riding the rails there. I mean, seriously, Esther, what's going on? 
Yeah, so apparently this website that, that aims to, to clarify, uh, you know, sex in public policy, at the very least, ha has, was, was, un was inaccessible for, for people riding on the Great Western Rail. Um, now, the company is saying that the AI technology blocks it because of its references to sex. But apparently, when, when passengers tried to access it, it was, it was flagged as a hate and terrorist um, organization website. Um, so there's, in there's inconsistencies there. Um, clearly, you know, GWR has a lot of work to do to contact the suppliers and find out what is going on. But, you know, the reality is that these people that are being flagged up as some sort of terrorist for not conforming to the idea that men can change their sexes and women can change their sexes <laughs> is completely ludicrous. There are real-life consequences for these things, and we have to start addressing them. Oh, absolutely. Once you start labelling people terrorists, then, uh, you know, people who are against their views are entitled to take very extreme measures against them, aren't they? But honestly, whether it's the railway or whoever designed the algorithms for the AI, the artificial intelligence thing that picked it up, someone's playing funny buggers with free speech. I don't know, it's the, you know, you cover this a whole lot with your writings and, and on your Twitter account and everything. Do you feel we're winning or losing? I think this is probably the breaking point. I think this issue of, of you know, self-identification and forcing people to, to believe what they don't want to believe, I think that's what's going to be people's breaking point. You know, often people that are about, you know, for this whole gender ideology thing say it's about tolerance and respect, but they don't seem tolerant or respectful for people that will never believe that a man can become a woman. And, and so that's where really, you know, the sticking point is. Uh, the reality is the repercussions of having men in, in women's refuges or women's prisons and, and in women's sports, it's just because coming too much and people are realizing how ludicrous this movement is.